everybody. Who am I, actually? Well, the important thing is I am nobody. And that's kind of an important thing. We're going to come back to that. I don't have uh, a Wikipedia page to my name. I don't have any important familial connections. Um, I had a cousin who was a voice actress on The Last Airbender. That's pretty much it. Uh, like, I don't have uh, 20 years experience uh, in the industry. I am not a marketing guru. Uh, I'm not really anybody important, and that's pretty, that's pretty key. But who am I actually? My name is Augustine Dalton. Uh, I am a former uh, ecology major uh, who in 2019, shortly on the eve of the COVID-19 pandemic, decided to start making short films. Uh, in 2021, I founded my LLC, Gloomy Texan Media. It's a little production company based here out of uh, Olympia, Washington. Uh, and, uh, you know, do you know me? Have you seen anything I've done? Probably not. But, you know, there's, there is a reason that I'm here today, and that is that I have put myself out there. And that statistically is kind of a hard thing to do. A lot of people don't do it for reasons that are not even their fault, but we'll get to that. So two notes about this is that I'm going to be speaking from my experience as a filmmaker. Uh, so everything that I'm talking about has to do with the, the, the making and marketing of uh, narrative and documentary cinema. Um, so my some big overnight success, uh, no, but there's a reason my fellow Dallas diaspora, Robert Cam, invited me here to speak, and that's because I, I can say that I have put myself out there, and that's a theme we're going to be focusing on, putting yourself out there. So how hard can it be to put yourself out there, right? I mean, the, if you don't have a good gauge on that question, uh, don't worry, because most people don't. When people are kind of def deferring to an example, like how can it be done? How can people who don't, co don't have like big industry connections, uh, who aren't uh, otherwise established, how do they um, make a name for themselves in independent filmmaking? There tends to be like uh, the holy trinity of names that they bring up as examples of how it can be done. They bring up Quinn Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez, Kevin Smith. <laughs> Because here's three things you want to consider. First of all, that any success story, any big lauded success story, is always going to have an element of survivorship bias, right? So uh, there's that tendency to look at something that's uh, statistically rare and say, well, oh, this is possible, so it must be probable. Uh, second of all, these three guys that I mentioned, uh, I mean, they're, they're big names like in the, in the 90s indie wave, and people defer to them as examples of how it can be done. Uh, you also, I have to also remember these three guys had another person on their side, uh, a certain producer who, you know, we won't name him, he's in prison now, um, a guy who, but the, the point being that, you know, it's not all a matter of gumption, but also a matter of who do you know. Uh, and the third big thing is that, you know, about on average, when did these guys have their big breakout uh, successes? On average, the average year when this happened, it was like 1994. That's the year I was born. And I'm almost 30. So to put it lightly, a lot has changed since then. You know, a lot has changed. Like the way that we um, consume media, period, has changed. Being realistic is a big, big key to this enterprise. This enterprise is full of really unrealistic people. I do want to... Uh, set this up by kind of avoiding the toxic positivity that comes with some things because, you know, for, first of all, cause there's a lot of people who do think like, oh yeah, having an idea um, for a movie, that's enough. Like, let me tell you something, ideas are a dime a dozen. Uh, nobody really uh, cares about, that's why pitch meetings in like the system are so hard to get into is because, yeah, nobody cares about ideas. Uh, people care about uh, who you're connected to, who can vouch for you, and do you have like, a track record that suggests that you're able to pull something like this off, which is kind of why, uh, besides just the advantage of getting some practical, cutting your teeth on the ground experience, filmmakers gravitate toward you know, making short films. It's really hard to kill your darlings when you're doing your first short film because every frame you capture, you are so in love with because 
I'm making a movie? <laughs> I'm making a movie. <laughs> so of course, it's something you would see in somebody else's film and say, like, okay, obviously this is this is bloated, this this scene is belabored, this is going on too long. Uh, for you, I mean it's it's the kiss of the muses. There's there's no reason you would think of cutting it. If you can get it below 10 minutes, that's ideal because you think about uh, you have to think from a, a programmer's point of view, a festival programmer's point of view, about like little blocks that things are going into. Big advantage of a film festival really is the um, the in-person experience because you get to meet people, you get to network, you get to have that kind of glorious experience of seeing something you made on a big, big screen the way you wanted it to be seen, and having other people. Uh, laugh at things that you wanted, wanted them to laugh at, maybe things you didn't want them to laugh at, uh, have them uh, recoil at things that you uh, meant to be troubling, uh, whatever. You're, exper you're having the theatrical experience with something you made, and then you get to talk to people about it after. You get to talk with programmers, you get to talk with other filmmakers, you get to, you know, if you get lucky, you get to meet, um, you know, some producer or something says, hey, I like what you do. Uh, take my card. Here's my here's my email. Let's let's talk in the future. You know that's that's like the kind of the dream experience. Uh, so then a few uh, months later in lockdown, well, why don't we why don't we use what we have? Because I only had that one short film under my belt at that point. Why don't we use what we have here? Because I had because I still had Gabe, my main man, and you know he was uh, working an essential job, just like me. You know we were we were experiencing the trenches of this. You know, at the height of that summer of, of COVID-19, of what it was doing, because we were both working like retail at the time, so we were, we were like, you know, second to um, actual healthcare workers. Like we were there on the front line of what was happening, of how ugly things were getting out there. Um, and I said to him, you know what? I have a DSLR. I have your thespian abilities. I can I can rig a mic uh, onto my person or your person somehow. Why don't we just make something? Why don't we just make something about this moment right now? Um, that's where our short film entitled "Due to Unforeseen Circumstances" uh, came from. It just spoke to what people were going through, and it was it was kind of an audacious thing to do. A few hours ago, I almost made a decision I think I would have really regretted. I just I decided that's not how I want to go. I guess probably since we're, there is an instructional, I should get to this. Film Freeway. This is actually the means by which um, people submit films. There are other ones, but this is the one that matters. Film Freeway. Uh, it's free to make. Uh, most all um, film festivals, certainly the reputable ones, uh, will be on here, and including the disreputable ones. They'll be on here, and this is the primary means by which people submit uh, their feature or short films. Or uh, there's like screenplay, screenwriting stuff on there too, if that's your thing. Uh, how it works is, yeah, you make an account. There is like a paid option uh, if you want to get more waivers or just kind of reduce the the price you have to pay for submissions, because uh, submitting ain't always cheap. And uh, one cool thing is that they do allow you to do promotions. So let's say you have a new short film out. Um, you're not quite sure which festivals will go for it, which won't. Well, they give you the option to do like you know, short of the week, uh, you know, for your consideration type things, where you pay ten, twenty dollars for a single day, and the website or whoever runs it, they, they will float your project to. Uh, you know, th across the desks of all these uh, different film festivals, and you know those ones, the ones who like us, say, "Hey, we saw your project. We think it might be a good fit. Here's a 75% off discount. Here's a 50% discount. Here's 25%. Here's you know, here's if we really like it, here's a full-on uh, fee waiver." Uh, and you know, what do you find when you when you do that? Is you're going to find there's there's a lot of again same Sturgeon's law as always. There's just a lot of junk out there. But there's yeah, there's some really cool smaller fests uh, that want to kind of build a relationship with new filmmakers, and uh, you know that's that's pretty cool too. As a younger filmmaker, I was very very excited about having all these all these laurels on our on our quarantine film. Um, Happy birthday, Gabe. Uh, but now, I can, now kind of looking back on it, I can actually tell you like what is, what's sort of serious and what isn't. Um, let's see. Yeah, first of all, any, almost any festival with awards in the name is is guaranteed to just be a money sink. I mean, like I said, you're getting a laurel out of it, but understand you're getting what you pay for. You're not getting like, 
you're not getting ink, you're not getting a screening, you're just you're just getting a laurel, like, and that's that's fine for some people, but I think probably others would say like mm, it's kind of unserious of you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me here and talking about how to get eyeballs on your work. Well, I just want to thank you for stopping by.